So this is the second way of understanding this relationship. A third way is through under seeing, uh, imagining a large field with thousands of wells in it. Okay? And each well is, a, is like a human being. The problem is that most of these wells don't go deep enough in order to receive water from the divine lake, which is very deep under the surface. They're too shallow. Secondly, from time they have become filled with rocks and stones and twigs, and there's not very much access to this divine energy or consciousness which exists in the center of their being underneath the well, at the base of the well. So what happens is, this lake, which is God, which is the divine energy, decides to create its own well. And this is called divine incarnation. And so there's an incarnation of the divine, which has all the attributes of the divine. Divine love, ability to do miracles, knowledge, of all things. And this being walks on the earth as a divine manifestation of this energy so as to remind the wells of what there is in the center of their being. So you can imagine small drops falling into each well from the miracles, from the love, from the teachings given by these divine beings. And that awakens the awareness of what is inside of me. Then there are two ways for the wells, which are in this field, to connect again with the divine source. One way is to worship the divine well through worship or prayer, as we discussed last week. Another way is to dig deep into themselves through meditation and philosophy uh, to as to touch that divine lake which exists within the center of their beings. Eventually, this is what has to happen. Eventually, the focus has to stop being on the form. We have to see, stop looking at the well and realize that the well is no, no more than a manifestation of the divine lake. It is that the form is just a temporary, temporary manifestation of the universal and that God cannot be limited to an image. The divine cannot be limited to an image that we have in our mind. It is something universal beyond time and beyond space. But the image is a very useful way for us to connect. But it does not represent the totality of the divine. Another idea here, a model that we can investigate, is the flame. Now, there's a very nice custom in the Orthodox Church at Easter where at the moment that they, they are about to acknowledge the rising of Christ from the dead, the, church, the priest comes out from behind of the altar with a candle lit. And everyone in the church then goes to light their candle from that one flame. So that one flame is just transferred it's transferred from one candle to the other as each person takes their candle to light others. And so we see this one energy moving out through the church, spreading out until everyone's candle is containing the same flame which the priest came out with. So in this way we can understand that there is one consciousness which spreads out in expressing itself through all of these apparently separate containers of that consciousness. But each candle is containing the one flame because that one flame just spread from one candle to the other. So each of us has that spark of the divine within us regardless of the color of the candle. You know, you find large candles, you find small ones, you find very fancy ones. Even now you find them with Superman and Batman. It's unbelievable kinds of things on them. Okay, so... Uh, each of these is the difference in form, but each, regardless of the form of each candle, there is only one flame, and it's the same. Okay? So all beings, although they may appear differently, 
are simply containers of the one divine energy, the one divine light. It doesn't matter whether they're American or Greek or Turkish or Russian or black or white or Christian or Muslim or Hindu. These are silly things which have to be let go of. There is just one divine energy. Another example is the example of the circle and its spokes. That is, we have a wheel here and there's a hub in the center of the wheel from which all spokes emanate. Now, uh, the further we go out on each spoke, the more distance there is between the spokes. Hmm? Each spoke is an individual. And the center is the center from which all individuals come. So the center is the divine. It's the sat Chit Ananda, the divine consciousness. And the spoke emanates from that. So we emanate from that divine consciousness. And that starts out, as you will learn next week, as a very fine kind of consciousness, which we call the soul, or the uh, causal body, or the higher intellect. And then it becomes something more concrete, which is called the mind. And then something even more concrete, which is called the energy body. And then even more concrete, which is called the physical body. So at the end of the spoke, outside, I have the physical body. As I go more deeply and I have the energy body, as I go deeper, I have the mind. And as I go even deeper, I have the soul. And if I go through the soul, I come to God. I come to the divine, which is the center of all of these uh, spokes. So the, if my identification is on my body, then I feel great separateness. As my identification begins to move inward to the energy body, to the mind, to the soul, then the distance between myself as a spoke and another as a spoke lessens. When I come to the center of my being, which is the center of the wheel, I come to the center of all beings. And this is why some people, spiritual people, have knowledge of what other people are thinking or feeling, or what they've been doing. That's why they have knowledge of their past and their future. Because they come to the center of their being, which is the center of the other being. There's only one center of beingness. There's only one center of consciousness, you see. But that requires, of course, the ability to withdraw ourselves from our individual identification, from our identification with our, as a, of ourselves as a body and as a personality. As we are caught in the ego, it is very difficult to experience such a state. Another example is the sun, which is shining and is reflecting in millions of bodies of water all over the world, in oceans, in rivers, in lakes, in glasses of water, in puddles on the road, mud puddles. And this image of the sun, as it reflects in each medium of reflection, differs depending on the depth of the medium, the particles in the medium, the color of it, the nature of it. But there is only one sun. There is only one reality. But that reality appears to be millions of suns in millions of reflections and appears differently in each reflection. 